Good morning, every, everyone. My name is Tafari Gabre. Um, I'm the chief program officer at Greenpeace USA. But uh, more than that, I've spent my life fighting for workers' rights. But I know that not all of it will matter if we don't have a safe and stable planet to work on. Greenpeace USA is, like all of you, a stakeholder in General Electric's business. Because the decision made by General Electric matters to the planet. We are in a battle to save our planet Earth, our nation, and our, our entire species from catastrophic climate warming caused by our emissions from burning fossil fuels for energy. And that direction, that direct, what direction GE takes matters tremendously to that outcome. GE, the company founded by Thomas Edison, the company that ushered the electric era for our entire globe more than 100 years ago, has lost its way. In General Electric's 2020 sustainability report, titled Building a, a World That Works for Tomorrow, CEO Larry Kalp wrote a letter to all of us, fellow GE stakeholders, expressing the company's heightened responsibility to advance sustainability priorities through its, I quote, commitment to our people, communities, and planet, end quote. Last year on May 4th, 98% of investors voted for a shareholder resolution at General Electric's annual meeting, which asked GE to report on whether and how it plans to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions across its businesses and products by 2050 in alignment with the Paris Climate Agreement. GE Sports support supported the resolution. In 2020, GE had announced its goal of carbon, ca carbon neutrality by 2030, but only for the company's direct operation and facilities, scope one and two emissions. But emissions from GE's products in scope three account for a major portion of the company's total emissions. We at Greenpeace USA cannot think a better way for GE to make good on these commitments than by developing a high road domestic offshore wind supply chain that creates good paying union jobs here in the United States. For the global response to climate crisis to succeed on the scale that science demands, governments and industry leaders like GE have a responsibility to make rapid and bold investments in climate action that will acce accelerate the energy transition in a just way. Kolb proudly wrote in 2020 letter to stakeholders that GE will, I quote, innovate our technology and our company to ensure our rise to challenge, to, to, to challenge, to challenge of building a world that works. But when we see GE spending billions of dollars in stock buybacks to try and affect its stock prices instead of accelerating a green transition, when we see that it intends to spend at least $2.5 billion in, re in related administrative costs to break itself apart into three weaker companies exposed to even more slicing and dicing by private equity corporate traders. Then G looks like, to, looks like a company that has the technology, but not the right state of mind. We are in a battle for the survival of our species on this planet. We need to exit fossil fuel incentive <clears throat> energy production. We have no choice. The survival of its survival or it's our disappearance. Make no mistake about that. So GE has enormous responsibility to the world. To the world. It produces and in, in developing even better, amazing wind power turbines and generators that can generate huge amount of carbon-free electricity. It has installed huge amounts of those 
onshore wind turbines across the globe with more than 49,000 onshore wind turbines installed in more than 35 countries and the total capacity, installed capacity of 62 gigawatts. And we say that's great, but it makes, it makes this wind turbines and generators elsewhere, not in the United States. It's not manufacturing those here in the States where it does its final assembly. GE is too conscious of the green dollar, of quick bugs, rather than greening our planet. Build, building green industrial base in America is essential for our green energy transition. The thing about the green technology is that it cannot be hoarded. It needs to be shared. Its use, its installation, and its production has to take place in each continent or it will fail. We all have a role to play. What GE leadership has been doing is very problem problematic because it's leaving GE's American workers, GE union workers, stuck in, make, stuck in making fossil fuel power generation equipment they have been making for generations. But it won't transition them to making wind power turbines and generators, even though they want to do that work, even though they are extremely skilled and can do that work, even though they know how to do that work. The Biden administration is seeking to install 30 gigawatts of offshore wind power by 2030 in America. Some experts have projected that it would, it would be upwards of 2,000 plus turbines. GE wants to win some of this work, but there is no commitment by GE to make any of them here in the United States. That is unacceptable. US GE workers involved today in manufacturing power generation equipment deserve a green and just transition. And the beautiful thing is that transition does not have to cost them one job. In fact, it will, it will create more jobs than they have left with today after decades of job cuts and disinvestments. That's why Greenpeace USA is, is here today as one of so many millions, in fact, billions of General Electric stakeholders to ask for a different course of action from General Electric. We want to say to GE, you have great technology. Don't be selfish with it. Don't be small-minded. Don't think in terms of corporate greed. Think about clean electricity for all. Worry about carbon. Worry about people, not just the price. Thank you so much.